Hey, everybody. My name is Amari Souza. Uh, I'm a design researcher and professor of design at Texas State University. I am also the founder of the State of Black Design Conference. Um, I'm Will Raglan. I'm a creative director at Apple on the branded design team. My name is Mark Davis. I am the Senior Vice President of International Creative Advertising at the Walt Disney Studios. And I'm Laurie Brown. I'm the Senior Vice President of Creative Advertising at Universal Pictures and Marketing, and also the co-founder of the CCC, the Creative Coalition of Color. Hi, my name is Derek Shields. Uh, I started a Proof Creative Group. Uh, we focus on print advertising. My name is Evan Adams. I am a production art manager at The Refinery. Uh, I've been in this field for almost 10 years now, so I'm just uh, kind of a newbie. Glad to be here. I'm Rich Boulay. I'm an ACD over here at The Refinery Creative. Awesome, awesome. Well, one of the first questions I'd love to ask, especially considering you guys are all coming from so many uh, amazing companies and different types of focuses as far as creativity is concerned. Um, where did you guys start? Where are you guys from? How did you guys get introduced uh, to the role that you're currently playing now? Um, what, what's that journey been like for you? Um, let me give you the cliff notes. <laughs> uh, I've got about 25 years in this business. Um, uh, I'm a Howard University grad, so HBCUs. Um, and outside of graduation, uh, I worked in the music business in DC for a while, and I moved back to Los Angeles, and funny enough, I ended up getting a internship at New Line Cinema, <clears throat> uh, an independent di distributor at the time. Um, and from that internship, I, to make this quick, I took a role in the mailroom. Uh, that allowed me some time to really meet various different people in different uh, departments. Uh, I moved from the mailroom to corporate publicity. Uh, from corporate publicity, I ended up moving, becoming the overall marketing uh, coordinator for the field, for the floor. And over the course of that time, um, there was a gentleman named Chris Pula who was the head of um, advertising at New Line Cinema. And from time to time, he would um, he would take various different comps of the films and artwork and he would put it outside of his office and he would invite people to come by and just say, you know, what do you think? You know, let you know, give you a brief synopsis of the movie. What do you think best encapsulate what I just said? You know, and some people would take advantage of it and I loved any time he would ask me that question. And I always had an opinion, whether it was right or wrong, you know, creative is subjective. Um, and a role opened up on his team in the creative advertising group. And he offered me the position um, of a coordinator. And from there, um, I moved on from New Line. I got recruited to go to 20th Century Fox into the international creative group. I started there as a director. I worked my way up from director all the way up to senior vice president, uh, helping to run the division there. And just three years ago, as we all know, Walt Disney bought 20th Century Fox. And within the merger, uh, I moved over to head the international group there, where I currently am now. So it's been a long journey, but it's, uh, it's been worthwhile. Yeah, I started out uh, as a post-production person, uh, but in the film marketing industry, and I completely just stumbled into it. I had a friend who was an assistant editor on a film and needed some help, and I said, sure. And uh, I went to go work with her, and hook, line, and sinker, I fell in love with the industry because I'd always loved movies. I went from job to job learning about the industry, it was a finisher for a long while, so I would finish the t TV spots and polish and clean them up before they went on air. And I wanted to be a bit more creative, so I started editing on the side and um, caught the eye of the company owner. And he made me his assistant producer. And I started working cuts and working with editors. And that was at aspect ratio. And I then hopped to BLT AV. I became a creative director with a small boutique company. 
um, of just a handful of editors. And so I worked on the agency side for about 20 years, and I've been at Universal for almost four, uh, and I'm a global creative there. So I work on the movie posters, the trailers, TV spots for the Universal films, and internationally for MGM, UA, and Focus. Uh, <clears throat> so, quite a while ago. <laughs> uh, I guess my early career is the Walt Disney Company. Uh, it was like early 90s. Uh, I didn't actually realize that there were departments and groups that did like movie posters and copy. I didn't realize like there's a full on group of people that are behind the movie posters, the copywriting, the trailers. I didn't realize it. So, uh, I started at Disney. It was like maybe 92. I had an opportunity. It was what everybody called desktop publishing at the time, which now we know is like the Apple's, everything's done on the computer. And uh, I started with Dick Tracy campaign, like early, early on, so in production, and, and just kind of eventually moved my way up from a junior uh, to you know a designer to a creative director, and working mostly on animated print advertising. And I, I worked at Disney for 10 years, I worked in domestic marketing, and then I moved to international marketing as well for a f number of years, and then Eventually, after 10 years, I left uh, and continued that process on the outside as a, as a vendor, uh, working with clients like Disney and Fox, et cetera, uh, to continue to create uh, movie poster advertising for, for the industry. And in between that, I started at another uh, sort of trailer house, and I sort of founded a print division. And then I learned a lot of the, you know, sort of the ropes from there, and then I eventually started my own agency called Proof Creative Group. Uh, but we do a lot of the same things. We work with some of the same clients and doing a lot of you know print advertising and try to push the needle and, and do different things that are standing out. So, but again, I, if you would have asked me when I first moved to LA, like there's a whole team of people that just spend time coming up with hundreds and thousands of comps to promote one movie. I wouldn't have never realized that existed. <laughs> there's copywriters like there's a whole world. So uh, it's you know mind blowing, but. I end up doing it and loving it and passionate about it and still still doing it. Okay, I'll, I'll jump in real quick. <laughs> um, I'm from Philly originally. Um, I've been doing it for doing this for about 20, 21 years. I ironically, I didn't go to school for graphic design. I was a graffiti artist running around the street in the middle of the night with mm -hmm. spray cans, stuff like that. And ironically, I learned more writing on walls than I did in art high school. Uh, it taught me placement, composition, because the higher up you put a piece of graffiti on the wall, the more visibility it got, the colors you use created better visibility. Um, I learned about making things more legible but stylistic at the same time. So it's ironic that once I started doing this, I just sort of had this innate sense to be able to, to figure out what would work. From writing with spray cans, I got an opportunity. Some friends introduced me to a man who owned a record label called Rough House Records. Um, he gave me an opportunity. He was starting a new company. He um, asked me if I wanted to design the logo. I was just learning Photoshop. So I did a lot of it by hand with watercolor and just scanned it in and tried to make it look three dimensional and cool. And he offered me a thousand dollars for it. So from there, um, working, he, he just opened up his relationships and his label with, to me. I got to work in New York at RCA Records. And from there, I was offered a job opportunity to work with Priority Records out here. So my first project was a soundtrack for training day. Like I was really excited to, to work in LA. And like Derek said, I had no idea <laughs> that there was an industry where you, would get, you could get paid yeah. for just being creative all day. So from there, I got to work at a company just like Lori at BLT Communications. Mm -hmm. um, I worked in the theatrical print department, started out in home entertainment, went to theatrical print, started as a junior designer, left there as a senior art director, went to become a creative director and then a VP of, of print at another agency and I've been at Apple TV Plus for about 10 months now as a creative director where I get to work on global print campaigns, some digital out of home, um, high impact digital things of that nature, but for the most part I exist in the movie poster or TV key art world. Okay. <laughs> um, well, you all have such inspiring stories to me. Um, I, <clears throat> I can kind of piggyback off of a few of your your stories in that I began kind of self-taught at a very young age. Um, my father worked in computers and my mother was uh, industry adjacent. She worked in event planning at ABC. Um, so entertainment was always around me growing up. Um, so I, you know, a big movie fan, making movies. I went to school for filmmaking, um, but realized that I kind of had a gift in designing as well. Um, so I started designing film posters for 
students for student films, and um, it kind of caught on around campus, and I kind of became the film poster guy at mm -hmm. school. So um, once graduation kind of rolled around, I found the refinery and uh, entered the design contest, and they have such great opportunities with, you know, the opportunity to kind of get a taste of, of the world that, you know, I'm now deeply immersed in. So it's been a wonderful journey. Uh, I moved out here fresh out of college with two suitcases and that's it. And uh, an internship dream to hope, hoping that it would turn into a job. And luckily it did, thankfully. <laughs> so I didn't want to go back home, but um, <laughs> yeah, since then, you know, just, I think it's really about who you work with and the, the kind of relationships you build with people that guide your experiences. And, you know, I've been, blessed to work with a lot of great people. Yeah. Mm. Thanks. Yeah, I also come from a graffiti background, which is kind of interesting. So I did that since I was like 12 till I was like 20 something. Um, same thing, I learned my composition, my colors, my design theory, just everything through graffiti. And I give a lot of my credit to my success to that because I think it, te it teaches you so much about working with people, how to respecting the art forms, respecting um, just kind of where you come from, connecting with people who are like-minded and, and creating a big mural or whatever with other artists that you just kind of collaborate with. And it's, it's, it's similar to this industry where it's like a team and everyone's just trying to get the same, a good product done. And I find it so strange. I see so many people in this industry come from graffiti, which is awesome. But um, yeah, so I also did like an internship at Film Roman where they did The Simpsons and King of the Hill. So I come from like a traditional animation background where I was literally drawing with uh, pencil and paper. And then I thought I was gonna do that, and they got to my final project in school, and I hated it. I was like, I'm done with this. Like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just, I'm just over this. And then, as I got deeper into the industry, like it became, you have to animate. You have to. Um, everything was going digital. Everything was going social. It's like d design and animation became one. And I found that that just helped me. I was like, oh yeah, I guess I'm an animator again, you know. Um, but I like to always call back to my graffiti background because I feel like that really helped me. You know, it really made me be successful in this industry. Yeah. All right, I'll add to, I didn't mention it because I'm from New York, so I was also, well, I don't know if you guys are arrested, but I was arrested <laughs> <laughs> for doing graffiti at a young age. Uh, but but to, your, to both your point, I mean, it, to me, it's like what we do is legal graffiti, right? We're doing outside advertising, <laughs> right? It's like you're doing something that you want somebody to notice and catch their attention. So it's very similar maybe not legal, but very similar. I mean, now it's like an art, right? Now it's considered, uh, but yeah, graffiti goes, takes me back uh, to my <laughs> younger adolescence. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I think the beauty of uh, what you guys just said in terms of like sharing your story, um, at least the beauty of what speaks out to me is the fact that uh, for many of you, there wasn't a direct linear path. So some of you went to school for one thing ended up falling into a new career. Some of you found mentors that helped guided you um, into the path that you're in. Some of you found this career through passions that you had. One thing that I find myself being asked as a professor, especially from parents and uh, college freshmen, is what do I need to do in order to be successful or what do I need to do to find myself in some of these important roles or, 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 or working for these large name companies or even starting my own business eventually. If we were to switch roles and you were to speak to some of these parents or to some of these students, what would you tell them they needed in order to make it? I mean, I would say the first thing is passion. Mm -hmm. That's key to all this. It doesn't matter what it is you want to do. It doesn't matter what position you want. It, it starts with passion, it starts with effort. You know, you can do anything if you get those two things. I would echo that. I would say definitely the passion. We're all in the movie business. And I assume we all love movies, mm -hmm. right? That's that's a number one, um, finding your passion. But it's also about finding a community, networking. And I know we all say this. That is really the truth. You have to find allies, not only in this town and in this, in this industry, but then within your communities. And if you know someone who somewhat is empowered in a way it doesn't hurt to have a conversation it doesn't hurt to continue to beat down the doors that's the one thing i feel like that's missing a lot nowadays because everything is instant gratification i go back to my own journey 
there was no instant gratification. I, I could never imagine myself being in the position that I am now when I was peddling people's mail, going around. I had a drive and a determination to try to find my place and to continue to talk to people. And at some point, you know, everyone wants to be respected and that's great to be respected, but every now and then you have to put your ego to the side to work to build for what you want. So I would say just passion, A, number one, and B, try to build a plan that if you can find some people in your life or around your, your inner circle to kind of build with, use those as stepping stones to continue to, to build up. I think um, everything that they said is absolutely perfect dead on. But the one thing I want to add to it is sometimes that community, you have to be, I guess what I'm trying to say is you have to be open to criticism. That's one of the things like you need to find your passion, you need to find your drive. But if you're not able to be corrected, then it's hard to grow. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that I did that I benefited from was I was able to find the lessons in a lot of things that people would have found negative that would have made them quit. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to talk about it, we're going to talk about it. Being a black designer in this industry at times can be very difficult, you know? Um, and I think one of the things that's worked to my benefit in particular is I didn't get to work on a lot of stories that echoed my experience or my lifestyle. So it allowed me to be able to see things in different ways to see things through a different lens or from another perspective. So when I did get to work on projects that were my story, I was able to really sink my teeth into them from a much more experienced perspective because I was able to tell so many different types of stories. So I think that if you're going to do this, understand first and foremost that it's gonna be hard. And I think that I have children that are in their late teens, early 20s, and that instant gratification thing is real. I think that if you are in that age bracket and you want to get into this industry, you have to understand that some pain comes with growth. And you have to be willing to make those self-sacrifices. You have to be willing to, to really anchor yourself and find that determination and learn from the failures so that you can potentially grow into a senior vice president. You can grow into a global creative that handles all types of things or a business owner or, or an associate creative director at a you know very large Hollywood agency. So if you're able to do that, if you're able to find that motivation and you're able to see both the positive and the negative as a way or use it as a way to propel you, you'll be all right, you'll be able to make it. Yeah, I mean, of course you guys said all the, <laughs> all the same things and it's exactly on point. Um, yeah, it's just being passionate, but also consistent with that. You know, I think, I think when you say the immediate gratification, sometimes that comes with, well, I just got out of school, I need to make money, and that, you know, a lot of that stuff comes along with that. But I think in the beginning, I mean, I, when I started Disney, I worked 80 hours a week, mm -hmm. and it wasn't anyone there, but I knew we had deadlines and we needed things to get done. And so it was less about money, it was more about really being proud of what we were trying to produce and doing the best job I could, even just starting. There's plenty of late, late, late nights and, you know, but it's just being hungry and passionate and consistent, like constantly consistent. And I'll add to that, outside of the passion, which is really important, but yes, you do have to have a tough exterior. I think being an absorber of knowledge or just things that are going around you, to take that all in, to know what's going on in the world, kind of have your finger on the pulse culturally so that you can take some of that information and put it into your work. Uh, I think is helpful, especially when you're in this industry and you're trying to be a problem solver as well as being an artist. And I would tell parents to encourage their kids, if they're talented at drawing or something like that, to not discourage them. Shouldn't be just being a doctor or a lawyer or what have you. There are fantastic jobs, especially in this industry, that pay well and they're not just jobs, they are careers. And that's part of what the CCC is trying to do, is to let people know that there is a path and a journey here. It can be lifelong. We've been in this industry for 20, almost 30 years, some of us, and um, we all put our heads down, just worked and worked and worked, because yes, as a black person in this industry, as a woman, I've often been in a room at a meeting, the only woman or the only person of color in the room. So we all had to work hard and have our work speak for us, generally because oftentimes you're sending your work over 
I'm not going to present it in the beginning of my career. So they don't know that I, what I look like, who I am. So I'm working hard to make that work better than everybody else is so that I can succeed and, and, and take a step forward. So I think that's really important is to, that's where that passion comes in, is to keep pushing, keep working hard, take the punches, learn from them, and uh, keep growing. Um, I think everybody has amazing responses, and I think, you know, as veterans, I absolutely agree with all of you in terms of having a drive and a passion and really wanting it. Um, I definitely recall the, the late nights and the, the long hours in putting in the work and just trying to learn and understand how the industry worked as an intern and designing and design elements and learning from clients. And there's just so many different moving parts that are important to understand that go beyond the design element that um, I think it's also important to, on top of those logistical things, is to just stay inspired all the time and just always be consuming art that you enjoy looking at, things that bring you happiness or things that can spark ideas or anything new, whether it's from something you're watching or something you see on the side of the road even. Um, I found a lot of inspiration for work through just various means and I think that's kind of how I keep going is to just stay inspired always. Cool. Um, one thing that I uh, thought of as you guys were speaking, um, I love the point that you made about finding your community. I love the points that you made about allowing your work to speak for yourself. And I love the point that you made about uh, the unique uh, difficulties of being a black designer in the industry. Um, the question that I would like to ask you guys, uh, considering, the level of, considering the level of success you guys each have, how do you navigate the nuances of your blackness within the workspace, especially coming from, you know, Philadelphia, New York City, Atlanta, cities that have high diversity rates and then going into an industry where there are not many people that look like you? I mean, that's a really, that's a really, that's a great question. It's a personal question. Um, you know, you, you, and I think I can tend to speak for all of us here, you get emotional because it's not easy and it's still not easy. And, you know, um, as some of us said, or we've been in this industry over 20 years and you can literally count on your hand the numerous times that you've been in a major room with another person of color, with someone that looks like you, with someone who identifies with you. As I said, I started out early working at New Line Cinema, and at that point it was independent. Majority of the films that we wor worked on or we produced were Friday, Boys in the Hood, Love Jones. Mm -hmm. Whose stories are those? Those stories you know, I should have felt comfortable being in these rooms speaking up, but because there was no one in there that I could relate to, right? We talk about code switching. We talk about going into a place of business and not being your authentic self. And going back to Will's point of learning from your lessons, it took a long time. Right? It's not something that happened overnight. It's not something that happened because social injustice happened. We've been born into this country with social injustice, right? So the things that are happening that are getting blown up in the media that we're seeing um, and the riots and the protests, this is something that we see every day. It's a detriment to our community and ourselves, but it's it's, it's, it's something that we're accustomed to and that being in this industry is tough and it's hard. And it is about trying to make the connections with people that you meet to try to have some sort of form of sanity mm -hmm. until you can find a way to build up the courage to walk in 
and say, I'm not switching who I am today. I'm going in. I'm going to be my authentic self. I'm going to give my opinion, whether or not you like it or not, and try to live your truth. And it's not hard. A lot of people say they do it, but they don't, right? And it's just taken, taken a long time. And I didn't really find my voice for a long time, right? Even maneuvering through this industry. Um, but I seem to have found it, and I hope that others will, but it's, it's hard. You know, while you get companies that say that they're trying to do the work and that they are committed to bringing in people of color, I'm still seeing positions and jobs or, or in my peer group, and nothing is changing, right? Nothing is changing, and it's a very difficult pill to swallow. Um, just constantly not seeing anybody that reflects who you are culturally. Um, but you have to be strong, and you have to try to uplift each other whenever we can. Um, but I would be remiss to say that things are changing. It's easy because it's not. And when I log on to that Zoom tomorrow, I'm going to look at those multiple boxes, and I probably will still be saying, scrolling through, see if there's a new face or there's someone there. You just you hope for the best, but when you're in it, you just have to try to be as authentic as you can and try to be that voice in the room. Yeah, uh, I agree it's a very personal question. Uh, I mean, I guess for me, I, I feel like sometimes I'm naive, right? Obviously not to the fact of what I look like to the world, but I guess whatever my mom ingrained in me, I just moved through. So when I started at Disney, I was probably the only black person <laughs> in marketing. Uh, but I never felt any certain way, I, much like what you said to letting the work speak for itself. Um, and I was probably rogue and I spoke my mind, maybe crazy to a point where it was like, do I know what I'm doing in this you know, arena? It didn't matter, I just was kind of flying with it, right? I wasn't overly a certain way. I wasn't overly stereotypical. I didn't also sacrifice who I was, you know, as a, as a black male coming from New York City. Maybe those are the New York City sent, you know, sentiment to me that just like I'm going to come in a room and you didn't accept me for who I am, <laughs> whether you like it or not. But that was just, you know, I never felt a, any certain way. I just moved and breathed. Not to say that maybe I might not have been called out my name in certain situations. Not necessarily in corporate America, but I never felt necessarily out of place. And again, maybe that's the naiveness of me just feeling like I'm a creative person and I'm gonna show you the best work I can give. And I'm sure there's been sidestepping and different things that were uh, done, but I never really looked at it from that standpoint. I just was me ultimately and tried to shine that regardless of, didn't matter what room I was in, whether it was predominantly white or not, at least personally for me. Uh, but yes, I have definitely felt the effects of, of what it does to the industry, and that's part of the reason why I'm here to talk about all this stuff and to hopefully, you know, uh, share that as much as I can with everyone else that's you know coping with that as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I actually can speak to that experience. Um, being young um, and being you know in this generation of people who kind of are a little bit more open about social change and being um, politically active and being, you know, having a voice and standing up. I've, I've found myself um, trying harder to kind of stand in my blackness and stand in, you know, my culture and my heritage um, because I know that sometimes I'm going to be the only one in that room. And I know that <clears throat> as people of color, we all, you know, know that this industry has ways to go, just like the film industry does, and you know, it kind of they kind of work parallel to each other. So as the more stories that you know are being shared for 
from diverse backgrounds, you know, we get to promote and create for those wonderful stories. So I think that in that, as the growth continues, that we'll start to see those changes, hopefully. I can only be optimistic as I can, um, but that's kind of my, my mindset as I go into things, as to just kind of be myself and uh, stay optimistic, for sure. Unapologetically black. Yes, <laughs> All right. absolutely. Cool. All right, so I agree with what everyone said, that it's a very personal question. Um, the one thing I'll, I'll add to what everyone has already said so beautifully is I think the first 10 years, I've been doing this for 20 years, the first 10 years, it was more so about trying to find my, find my place because what, with what I was doing, there was not anyone else that looked like me. And even once I started getting to some of the senior level positions, there was probably like, and I don't, I don't mean to sound like a braggart when I say it, but people that were doing it on my level, there was probably maybe one other guy that looked like me in the entire industry um, on the agency side. Um, but the one thing that I've, that I found initially was it was like trying to fit in, you know, trying to find, you know, my voice within this community that didn't represent me essentially. Um, you know, when I came from Philly, I spoke with Philly vernacular. I said, John a lot and bruh and boy and you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? At the end of every sentence. And the one thing that I am appreciative, appreciative of is I learned how to speak. I learned how to express myself. I come from a place where, you know, you don't use your words <laughs> to express. You, you, you do it in some other way. Mm -hmm. um, but I, 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 I'm grateful that I learned that. I learned how to communicate. And there was a time when I would not feel that I would be able to adequately ex express myself with a group of accomplished people like this. Um, but today I do, and I attribute that to that experience. I think after the 10 year mark, I said, no, I'm gonna be unapologetically me. Right. I'm gonna be funny, I'm gonna be you know, rude when I wanna be rude, I'm gonna speak my mind, and I am going to represent what I know, my artistic form with the experience that I've acquired and with the full breadth of my artistic talent. And I think I could speak for everyone else here when I say that there's no other way to be yeah. at the end of the day. So um, I appreciate what everyone else has said. It helps me to see that I'm not alone in this journey. And I think that um, I wouldn't liken myself to be a pioneer in any stretch of the imagination, but I feel as though um, I heard about Derek Shields when I first came to LA. And I'm not saying he's older than me. <laughs> he was just here before me, right? Um, but I heard about him. Like, Lori introduced me to this gentleman right here. And I've been, have been wanting, I've heard his name for years and I've been wanting to meet him. He's somebody that looks like me that's doing it on a high level. Um, I worked with Lori at BLT back in the day and I watched Lori like climb, you know? So I feel like, there's an example that you can, if, if you aspire to do this, whoever's out there, there's an example that exists at this table that is very emblematic of the process, mm -hmm. um, the, the courage, the struggle, the creativity, like, please <laughs> listen to what these people have to say because um, I've watched them for years and it's, it's inspired me. Yeah. I think um, one thing that I really uh, want the folks that are actually watching this to take into consideration um, is that with any individual that you look at that has a considerable amount of success, there's probably an equal um, or a parallel, oh, I'm sorry, there's probably an obstacle that they had to overcome that's just as impressive as the achievement that they've made. Um, and one thing that folks may take for granted with the titles that you have and the years of experience that you guys may have under your belt is the difficulty that it took for you guys to get there, especially with that very same question that I asked you, navigating the uniqueness of your blackness. A lot of people take for granted how difficult it is to be the only one of anything in a particular room, whether that's the only person of color, the only person with your gender identity, the only person of your religious background or cultural um, experiences. Um, and for you guys to be able to do that, navigate that for the, the amount of time that you guys have and, and, and still do so well while maintaining your sanity is something that should be applauded. Um, I often joke with people myself and say that when you're attempting to be a professional and you're the only black person in the room, 
uh, when you're when you're navigating difficulties, you're always on the spectrum of Carlton Banks and Umar Johnson, and you're hoping <laughs> you're hoping to stay somewhere in the middle, so that nobody sees you <laughs> as as either extreme. Um, that spectrum exists, and it's an extremely difficult thing for anybody to navigate. So whenever you meet somebody of color who's done it, done it well, and, and has the uh, the accolades behind their names that they do, you have to you have to give them their flowers. So I just want to make sure that I acknowledge that and say that to you guys before I move on to the next question. Um, no worries, no worries. I, I often talk about a friend of mine named Ophelia, right? My family uh, is from Jamaica. Ophelia is a good friend of mine who also grew up in Jamaica. And Ophelia would tell me the story um, about when she grew up and how everybody in the family was responsible for growing something. Um, Jamaica is a very agriculturally rich place, um, and Ophelia loved sorrel, which is a drink that I love. It's a plant that she turned into a drink. But um, the lesson that she was uh, learning from her family was that if everybody grows something and brings something to the table, the family eats for a longer time period. Right? It's uh, it's 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 a ingrained lesson that, that, that forces you to think outside of yourself. The labor that you're developing today will bring fruit that will help feed the people that sit around the table from you. With that said, I'd love to learn more about how CCC came into existence and how you guys are utilizing it to grow food, fruit to, to, to feed the people that you're hoping to bring to the table. I guess that's me. <laughs> um, I think the CCC was formed exactly for that reason. It's because I finally was in a position and had spent a lot of time in my career um, to be able to connect with some other folks, other colleagues, uh, in order to get this initiative going. And the colleagues who I reached out to, some of whom uh, weren't black, but understood the need to help diversify this industry. So they were allies, true allies. Um, and we've been working really hard to try to do this outreach uh, in order to let people know about our industry, about all of these journeys. And it's going to take time, and we know it. Um, but this is the type of thing that I have to do. And I'm glad I'm in a position now that we can hopefully make a difference and go out there and speak to people, have these panels. Um, so that is the purpose of the CCC because nobody else is going to do it. We are the first uh, in the industry to have this platform where we're encouraging agencies and studios to post their jobs, to post their internships on one site because it's a large industry and, it's, and, and we've fallen into it you got lucky with your internship. So it's tough to find out that we exist. A lot of people think that filmmakers do their own marketing and do their own posters and trailers, and that's just not the case. We are, I think, almost 80 agencies in this industry, which means thousands of jobs. We are a huge industry, and we're trying to let people know about it. As we're going out there, we're finding it's really interesting to see how few people know about us. So it is going to take some time. Um, but we've already seen some successes. We had a pilot internship program last summer, uh, and three of those people uh, actually transitioned to full-time jobs. So we know that this little initiative can work. It's just going to have to scale up down the road. So I'm, fen I'm incredibly happy that we met and were connected and that you may be able to reach two to 4,000 people with your conference coming up, which is in incredible. So just having steps like this um, that we hope to say, hey, we're here. Because we often work in our bubble. It's hard work. And basically what we do for 12 hours a day is work. So to find the time to do the extra stuff um, is hard, but it's worth it to us. So um, I want to also thank everyone for their time to come here, get tested, and, and meet Omar, and for you to travel out here. Um, so we just want to spread the word. Um, the next question I have is easier than the other questions I've asked prior, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's twofold. It's more so, um, what are some of the measurable successes that you're hoping that CCC can have within the next five years? 
And for those that are in attendance that are watching this panel currently, uh, I know we talked about careers that people didn't know existed, that you guys happened to have worked. What are some of those roles and, 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 and job titles that, that are possible um, if, they, if they took a chance on uh, being a creative in the movie industry? It's anything, it's any job, it's anything anyone's talked about, like I said. It's just getting your foot in the door in our industry. So you could be a creative designer, you could be a shop owner down the road, so it's, it's anything. It, it's, it's, I mean, you, if you wanna talk about art directors and what they, they do, um, I'd gladly hand the mic over to someone to give a little more in-depth detail about their particular journey, which I think we might have already covered, but it's any job. I would say get your foot in the door if you have that passion that Richard talked about, if you love movies, maybe look at trailers and posters and um, get up to speed and start paying attention so that when someone asks you, well, why do you want to be in this industry? What posters do you like? You're going to have an answer. So I'd say look at what's around you. And if you like this industry, if you want to be creative with your career um, and use your skill set either starting out or transitioning from a different um, type of industry. There are a lot of things. I, I, I agree with getting your foot in the door. You know, I started in domestic advertisement, right? And I had the opportunity to move over to international. And this is another sector that I don't think a lot of people, you know, quite understand is that really opened up my mind, my creativity. I started to respect and understand culture to be able to open your mind and be open to the idea that sensibilities are different, mm -hmm. right? The things that you hear um, that work in certain cultures, it's so easy to dismiss. Mm -hmm. And to Lori's point, there's a lot of positions that we just, we just don't know about mm -hmm. that allow that opportunity to challenge you to think different than you've ever done before because you have a certain upbringing. Yeah, I would. I, I did want to touch on jobs for for a second. There are writers, illustrators, painters, matte painters, digital artists, 3D artists, 3D animators. There are people whose job is just to cut images out all day. You know, there are people who who sit like you know rotoscoping images, um, doing motion tracking, uh, color correcting, sound design. There are so many different types of jobs, and I, I will say within that, that landscape of diversity when it comes to jobs, I think everybody will agree with me when it comes to being an artist, there's a diversity of characters and personalities. Artists, I'm just be honest, we're weird people to begin with, you know, and I don't mean that in an insulting way. I've met some unbelievably introverted people, but their creativity was explosive. Mm -hmm. So I think that a lot of young people that I've talked to, they feel like, oh, I wouldn't fit in, regardless of color or gender or, or what, whatever your background is. Their, your personality will fit. Your, your, your size, your skin color, your hair texture, whatever, whatever you are, you can fit into this and there is a position for you if you have that passion that they were talking about before. Yeah, I mean, to that, uh, to that point, like for example, when I interview people, Somebody might come in, you know, thinking they just have to have movie posters, <laughs> but maybe they don't. You know, I've hired people who've done just sound design, and but they had a passion for it, and I was able to tap into that. So it's, you're right about the personalities. You bring you bring you to the table. It's not a cookie cut situation where it's like if you just bring me this because that's what you think I expect. I'm looking for so many other things, and, and maybe I'm rare, but I think we all are looking for someone who's creative and is thinking and is passionate. So. Whatever that is, it may not fit like the exact box, but because you showed in your personality that you're creative or you're passionate, that might still fit somehow. That's not exactly checking the box. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I definitely think that as a designer, there are so many different aspects of this industry that you can explore. Um, so my advice would be to just kind of be able to adapt and change to, you know, what comes next because streaming now in the wake of, you know, COVID-19 has become kind of the center and, and my job kind of shifted more from the print 
aspect to you know designing for streaming and packaging up you know large amounts of assets and so and that was you know a whole other design language i had to learn and you know the things that they ask for when you're sitting on a tv versus when you're passing on a billboard and you know just lots of various different nuances in in the various positions that you know there are so just always being open to change and learning new things i definitely think um is a good a good starting point yeah rich for sure i think what's great about our industry in general too is it it feels like it's been around forever but it's actually just starting too right like it's still day one because tomorrow is gonna be so different and next day and next day it's like we're gonna be you know long gone 50 years and be a whole new um, kid who's watching this video who's going to come and he's going to be sitting here with us or where we were, you know, and I think that's amazing. I think it's like I started with DVD, then went to Blu-ray, then I went to like iPad apps and iPhone apps and I started at the refinery as a print, I want to be print, and I went to digital and creative content. It's like it just moves and like now it's like with NFTs and the crypto world, it's like we don't even know where it's going to be yeah. next month, let alone 10 years from now, you know, so it's like if you're at home watching this or whatever, it's like whatever you're watching, it's like you can make it in the future, you know, because we're still gonna be around. Like this industry isn't going anywhere. It's like, it's a career for 50, 60, 70 years for you if you start young, you know, it's, it's amazing. And I'll, I'll add one last thing, which I think it also comes down to just ideas. Mm -hmm. right. So that if you're working at this agency, um, they're gonna be excited if the idea comes within these four walls that they present to the studio or the client that wins the campaign for them. So your experience, your point of view, your perspective is something you can add to the gumbo of what's being created on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a really collaborative process, so you might not come up with an idea and it's a whole cloth answer to an entire campaign or a, a poster or, or, or a way to animate something, but your input can definitely help change the trajectory of a project or a piece of work. So as long as you're thinking and you're creative and you're interested and engaged, an idea is sometimes all that it takes and you're contributing, you're always contributing. So, and that's appreciated and you can respect your peers and collaborators. So you're always firing on all cylinders and that's what I find um, inspiring and that's what keeps me going It's just that constantly always changing thing. It's fresh, it's new, and you're not just making widgets mm -hmm. and putting that out in the world. Right. It changes every day. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's amazing. Uh, just to recap the conversation we've had so far, some of the things that I want to make sure that everybody takes away as they're watching this. Um, you guys have each accomplished some amazing things. Not only have you guys accomplished some amazing things, but you guys are all coming from different parts of the country. Um, you guys aren't all from LA. You guys didn't fall into this career, but you guys fought and uh, found your way here through passion, grit, and talent. Um, you guys didn't have to go through a formal education process to become creatives in this industry, um, although some of you have, um, but a lot of you, um, all of you have that passion and creativity in common. Um, another thing that I want everybody to, to recall and, 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 and just to, to, to take a moment to, to, to give reverence of is the fact that you guys had to overcome a lot um, to be where you are, whether it's navigating the uniqueness of your blackness in a space that doesn't have many of us there, or even uh, the difficulties of packing up your bags from Florida State and then moving all the way over to Los Angeles without the certainty of a career. You guys have all done uh, done and sacrificed a lot to be where you guys are today, and that's something that, that should be acknowledged and celebrated. In addition to that, I, I, I want everybody to to kind of respect and appreciate the uniqueness of CCC, um, both as a resource where you guys are pulling together other agencies that are looking to hire people that look like us. Echoing back the, the metaphor of um, growing something, um, you mentioned how uh, the, the, the progress that's needed to be made may not happen within our, life, our lifetime. But I think the beauty of agriculture sometimes that a lot of people also don't necessarily discuss is a single plant usually comes with a number of seeds. And even when that plant dies out, those seeds can grow and build future fruit further down the line. So I think for what we're doing, what we're attempting to do, and what you guys are doing within the film industry is something that we don't necessarily, we, we 
just as you've mentioned, we may not know what things look like 10 years down the line. We may not know what things look like a year or two after we pass, but if we continue to put this work in and we continue to uh, nurture spaces for one another and pull our tables together, um, whether it's a state of black design in, 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 in uh, collaboration with CCC, we, we don't know what, what, what fruit will bear. So I personally just want to encourage you guys to continue pushing forward and doing the great things that you guys are doing and would love, love, love to have this collaboration that we're currently doing be a long-term thing. And thank you guys for having me out in LA. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys. Really appreciate that. No worries.